So there are many characteristics of mammals. Um, derived means that these are new and that all of the mammals have them. So some of these are not found anywhere else. So things like mammary glands and the production of milk, hair, are not found in any other groups. Some of these other derived characteristics are found in all mammals, um, but things like kidneys, other groups of organisms obviously have kidneys, but they have advanced to be able to conserve more water now that mammals are not necessarily near the water. Endothermy, so we saw some endothermy in birds. Um, this large brain to body size ratio, so we're gonna start to see more development in the brain for more efficient communication, uh, especially things like parent care, which is gonna go along with uh, like suckling infants. Differentiated teeth, so this is the f one of the first times that we're gonna actually start to see different shaped teeth. So things like incisors versus molars. Most other groups of animals, all the teeth look pretty much the same. So mammals come from the group called the synapsids, and these have one hole. Uh, so this is the hole in the, the skull. This here is the eye. And this is going to allow muscles to attach down to the jaw and then come up here and then attach to the head. There's a couple other structures in the skull that we start to see. So early uh, amphibians and reptiles only had one inner ear bone, the stapes. And then now in mammals, we see the articular and the quadrate bone, which used to be in the jaw joint, have moved into the ear. So the middle ear, we now see three bones, the malleus, the incus, incus and the stapes. And mammals had a huge adaptive radiation after the extinction of the dinosaurs. So during the time of the dinosaurs, the mammals were mostly small, kind of looked like little rodents. Um, but after that, there was a lot of niches that were open to mammals. And so mammals spread throughout the world and throughout the different uh, inhabitants on the world. And there's three main groups of mammals. There's the monotremes which are egg-laying mammals. There's the marsupials, which have pouches, and then the eutherians, EU meaning true, meaning that we have true placental uh, mammals, which is you and me. The monotremes is a really small group. There are four species of echidna and only one species of platypus. And these actually lay eggs what happens though, once the eggs are born, is that the babies suckle on milk from the mother. These don't actually have nipples, so instead they have milk secreting glands that are covered in fur on the bottom of the body. And then the fur collects the milk, and then the babies suckle the milk off of the fur rather than off of a nipple. Our next group of mammals are the marsupials. So these are gonna be things like possums, kangaroos, koalas, um, a lot of what you see in Australia. And these have a placenta, so the placenta is going to attach the embryo to the mother's uterus for a few weeks, maybe months. Um, and then these are born very, very early in the development. So the red kangaroo is about the size of a honeybee. This is a baby possum, but it, it's pretty small. You can see for size. Um, and then the red kangaroo is born at 33 days after being fertilized and it crawls up to the pouch of the mother kangaroo using its four paws and it doesn't take them long, only a few minutes. Um, and then it suckles off of nipples in the pouch uh, after that. So they complete their embryonic development while nursing in the maternal pouch. That pouch is called a marsupium. That's where we get the clade name. So marsupials are only found in Australia and North and South America. And in North America, the only possum or the only marsupial you're going to see is this possum. In Australia, for some reason, the other eutherian mammals didn't make it to Australia. They weren't as present. So the marsupial mammals were able to expand and radiate in Australia the, in a way that they just weren't able to do anywhere else in the world. So we see a lot of examples of convergent evolution when we compare organisms that live in certain environments in Australia to organisms that live in similar environments in um, North South America, Russia, Asia, Europe. 
Um, so things like the flying squirrel and the sugar glider are both rodents here that have flaps of skin, but from the forearm to the, the hind limb to help them kind of glide. Um, you can see the moles, right? The marsupial mole versus a eutherian mole. Um, even the kangaroo has something very similar in this cavi. Uh, one thing to note is that organisms that dig, so like a mole or the possum, the marsupium, the pouch, actually opens to the rear to prevent the organism from digging dirt into their um, pouch. And then the last group of mammals are the eutherians. E-U means true. And these are going to have a more complete uh, placenta and a more complete embryonic development. So many of these organisms are born with the ability to stand up, walk around, care for themselves, and then they continue to suckle and feed off of the mother using um, nipples and milk after birth. Uh, humans, primates, are typically born fairly early in development compared to things like deer, where they're born literally standing and able to run. So there's a huge complexity of eutherians. There was a large burst of evolutionary change about 100 million years ago that allowed for a lot of diversity in this group. So we've got groups like Proboscidae, which is going to include things like the elephants, Sirenia, there's two groups that went back to the water. There's Sirenia, which is going to be uh, manatees and dugongs, as well as cetaceans, which is the whales, dolphins, and porpoises. Xenarthia includes things like sloths, armadillos, anteaters. Uh, Lagomorpha is the hares and rabbits. Carnivora, uh, so here's my wolf. Carnivora is going to be dogs, clats, we weasels, bears, seals, walrus. Um, anything that's a carnivore, the carnivore will actually include the uh, panda bear too. So despite the fact that they mostly eat bamboo, they do have the carnivore traits. Um, Cetartiodactyla is going to include cattle, pigs, sheep, deer. Rodentia is the rodents, so that's going to be things like squirrels, mice, beavers, rats, and as well as this porcupine. Primates includes all monkeys and lemurs, chimps, gorillas, as well as humans. So this is a chimp. Uh, Perissodactyla didn't make it on here. That's going to be rhinos, zebras, horses. Um, and then Chiroptera would include bats. So those are the main groups of eutherians. Uh, so we're going to focus in a little bit on the evolution of primates, which is going to include humans.